For the greater part of February 2024, one month, not even a month after Tekken 8's release, Twitter has been at war over Ling Xiaoyu and her Art of Phoenix stance, also known as AOP. Watch this clip. Kwis, famous Huarong streamer on the left from the UK. No, she actually legit. No, that wasn't. That Getting wasn't, her move, his moves. That wasn't tracking. She legitimately just went one under. Completely one of my evaded by Ling Xiaoyu. Look at this again. She hits AOP down and ducks underneath his low attack. Now, uh, Kwis mentions it's not an Axis thing. He's saying that sometimes Xiaoyu can sidestep as part of the stance. And in, in, in those cases, it makes sense that it dodges. But in this case, she was already sidestepping, right? She sidesteps here, and look, his attack has not come out yet. Now it's coming out, and she ducks under. So that's a crucial detail, okay? Everything died down for a bit. There was a bit of, you know, like, oh, that's ridiculous. Delete Xiaoyu, you know, stuff like that. But where it got crazy is when Ni himself, the god of Tekken, weighed in. We have suffered this irrational behavior for a long time, to be honest. I think the more duck behavior, so like the, the low profile behavior, in AOP should be deleted. Normal AOP is enough. And this set the internet on fire. This went crazy. Look at these replies. No, your request is removing her essential thing. Uh, this is a guy asking a question. These are other guys asking questions, right? This guy is saying that, uh, you know, it's the arcade bro version. There are going to be broken things. There's a lot of crazy replies here. We're going to go into a lot of them. But this is what Twitter has been like for basically the past week from the time of recording. So what I want to do is not stir up more drama, not talk about like she needs it or she should be nerfed. I want to I want to inform you how the mechanic kind of functions and hopefully walk us towards a conclusion on how this can be balanced in a really sustainable way, right? Shall you players are some of the most technical, well-studied, like well-practiced mains of any character that I've seen in like fighting games. They they explore so many situations and know so many nuances. They're really, really smart players, right? So this kind of blind nerfing or like discussion, like discussion about blind nerfing could go really poorly and just make people unhappy. So first let's understand what actually happened in this KWIS clip. What I want to show you first of all, I have the wrong thing selected here, but there are situations where shall use AOP will just dodge because of the built-in sidestep function, okay? I'm not going to go too deep into this. We're going to talk more about the Twitter stuff because I know this is juicy stuff. But I want you to just be aware, okay? If Horong dashes up to me and does down 3-4, the move he did in the clip, okay? Xiao Yu can do a sidestep right AOP. And that's different from what happened in the clip, okay? In the clip, he hit down. And this requires a bit of precise timing. So rather than try and fail 50 times in the same, uh, in the same uh, video take, I'm going to show you a clip where I succeeded, okay? This is a clip where I succeeded in hitting the down input. Oh, hey, okay, we can clip that, we can clip that. <laughs> so you see here, if you hit down at just the right time as his foot is coming out, she evades it. She dodges underneath completely. So there's two kinds of AOP. There's the sidestep one and the straight up duck. Knee here is complaining about AOP duck, to make that clear. And what replies did he receive? Oh, so many replies. One thing that was really prominent is, uh, you know, he talks about this, like, she disappears for a while when ducking AOP and avoids all high mids and lows. And Mr. Croft, a prominent Ling Xiaoyu specialist, says respectfully, let's not spread misinformation, right? It doesn't duck everything. That's not true. So Ni corrects himself. He said, sorry, I was a bit too, uh, I, I said it too roughly. I said it too, like, broadly. Not everything, but most of the stuff. For example, Tekken 7 Armor King avoided, was avoided a lot. And then Mr. Croft agrees and kind of they come to an agreement. But the, the, the conversation devolves, right? All of these replies uh, to me were some really aggressive, some really passive, and it got insane. So let's look at this follow-up tweet he posted, okay? He posted, I got a lot of claims yesterday after talking about shall use duck AOP, or AOP down as we call it. But was I wrong? It avoids too much. Let's look at the clip and see if he's right. So these are all Jin's mids. Okay, so middle attacks traditionally beat crouches in Tekken as a fundamental rule. What blew my mind here is Jin's back three whiffing. Usually to beat AOP, you do like a scooping mid, right? A mid that scoops from low to high, but here it just misses. 
the overheads, like the overhead uh, axe kicks, things like that. Okay, that one hits. There we go. The hop kick misses. The back three misses. But it looks like forward forward three can hit. But basically when she does... Oh my god, it dodged. Okay, so look at this. At the start of the clip, we saw it hit. Right? So we think, okay, the axe kick should hit. This is what we would expect. He slams the leg down on her, it should hit. But this second time when she does the AOP duck, which is what Nia is complaining about, it whiffed completely. So he's saying AOP duck is too much. And since there's also the sidestep right attached, you can avoid too much. And you can see Dragonov completely missing almost everything, even his heat smash. Victor's is funny. That down two misses, the down four two misses. Victor's everything seems to miss this, this stance. Even like the knife trail goes through her. Look at this. The knife trail is like through her body. So again, this isn't a video to complain about what Xiaoyu can do. I just want to make casual viewers or people who don't fight Xiaoyu often more aware of how evasive this stance really is. And we'll talk about the balance in a second. Shaheen whiffing everything. I think you get the point, right? Like everything is missing. And this is where the sidestep right uh, comes into play. Knee is a Brian specialist. So tracking sidesteps is something he's pretty good at at this point, right? The sidestep, the sidestep AOP where you tap down and then AOP gives enhanced evasion. And what really stands out to me here are these two moves. I think all of the moves are supposed to track sidestep right, but don't quote me on that because I'm not a Brian expert. But I know for sure that down back three, this move is supposed to track sidestep right. It's also a low, so it should hit somebody crouching. Hatchet kick also is supposed to track sidestep right entirely. And in both of these cases, Xiaoyu is moving to the right and avoiding these moves. Again, I'm not an expert on the other moves. I'm pretty sure these are supposed to track sidestep right also. But uh, sidestep AOP is giving enhanced evasion in the direction that the move is supposed to cover. Right? The move is supposed to be covering that. So what this amounts to is Xiaoyu effectively, with good timing, has like an invincibility or like a parry is a good way to think about it. Here's a version of Huarong doing the same thing, or attempting to hit her. This is just frame Skyrocket, a launching mid, scooping again from below, and she is going underneath it. This is an axe kick, again hitting down, she's going underneath. These are all mid attacks. There is a Flamingo back three. This is his heat, oh, heat move. So after heat, he has a bunch of frame advantage, I believe is why he's doing this. Oh no, she's just ducking underneath each hit. <laughs> so this creates a problem for people trying to attack Xiaoyu. And, and to be fair, uh, as most people who play Xiaoyu will know, this is part of her identity, okay? And I'll, I'll talk about why this is more of a problem later, but let's look at what people were saying to Nii. Now keep in mind, Nii, if you haven't heard of him, is arguably the Tekken GOAT. He, the, people call him the god of Tekken. Arslan Ash, I would argue, is kind of the GOAT right now because he has the most victories right like go right now he's the goat of like tournaments but knee has been a legend in the tekken scene since tekken 5 so regardless lots of credibility and even arslan was saying that like xiaoyu is really good so not that important but this player says if only xiaoyu was an easy character we wouldn't see them screaming for nerfs but since she's not easy you know they go for another option which is to campaign for nerfs and knee actually replied he says no he's saying correct the excessive power duck aop is too much Right? He didn't complain about the sidestep AOP. He complained about the ducking one. And he said it's even more evasive than Eddie, who, if you don't know the character, he's not in the game yet, lies down on the ground and dodges things. Or Lei, another character not in the game, who lies down on the ground. Xiaoyu is more evasive than those. This guy tells Ni nee to learn the matchup. Which blows my mind. This guy plays Tekken professionally for a living. Ni nee is like 38, okay? He's been playing Tekken professionally for like... 20 plus years? This guy told him to learn the matchup. That blew my mind, okay? And then he said, if you didn't cry about Zafina or Fang, who was your character, then main shall you figure it out. And that just blew my mind. And he just, he laughed. He said like, oh my God, learn the matchup. How am I supposed to learn? It's an opinion that Namco should adjust the balance. It's not that he can't play around it. It's that it seems ridiculous. This tweet was insane. We're going to leave it at that. Shaoling, uh, another, I believe this guy's a Xiaoyu specialist, also said, you're right. But Ling is taking a risk. I don't know what custody means here, so I'm not going to try to translate that. But uh, he's saying that it takes risk to go into stance. And Ni replies, all stances have risks. 
all stances are hard to use. But to use them and get huge evasion is completely different. Okay, so one another, another argument here. Um, here's another argument from another player. Even so, in competitive play, most players don't let Xiaoyu players get away with this. So I think it's fine. They either have a low ready to counter the stance or they just back up. It's still risky. We'll talk about that in a second. Similar thing, AOP is risky, needs timing and knowledge. You're wrong. Just learn the matchup. Leave it at that. Um, one thing to note is that this is new behavior. If you look at old Tekkens, this is Tekken 4. This is a similar situation. And it doesn't seem to be recreatable. Like, Xiaoyu doesn't duck nearly as low. She, like, slightly animates that she's ducking, but she still gets hit by the lows. Right? She's not really moving. So, historically, it's kind of 50-50. This is a tweet talking about where the, this guy said, like, your character used to dodge a bunch of stuff. Like, what, um... You didn't cry when Fang had evasion mechanics. He said, when I played Fang in 2022, a lot of people told me Fang needs a nerf. And it got nerfed. But when I say it about AOP, shall you players say it's her identity? No problem, learn the matchup. Haha, <laughs> right? Well, Kenpo was part of Fang's matchup since... Or, uh, part of Fang's identity since Tekken 5. It's not a double standard. He does think Xiaoyu needs to win a major tournament in order to be nerfed. And then he says, don't do double standards. But he says, why don't you guys win a tournament? Which is kind of like, you know, back up what you're saying. Now, this is a really funny tweet. So this guy, Yiggs, uh, another Xiaoyu player, I believe, uh, tweets other characters evasion. So, so to clarify, this is about Zafina. This one is about Leo on the right. Right? Shall use mids gets evaded. Shall use mid gets evaded. Fang. Now this is about Fang talking about Fang's back sway. This is the back Kenpo that was being talked about. This is another Leo clip where, where Ling's shoulder gets evaded. Shoulder usually a low hitting mid, so it should hit here. And then these are all of Jin's hitboxes whiffing on Zafina. And then yeah, more Leo evasion. So is Knee wrong? Did he overlook that other characters have this problem too? No, Nii directly replies. He says, yo, I think this is a false comparison. You only used mid moves that hit high. I don't complain about that. Show us these moves. Skyrocket. Skyrocket hits Zafina. And if you look at this old clip we just saw, Skyrocket misses on Xiaoyu. So Nii did not let that one slide. He said, hang on. <laughs> You're using different moves than the ones we're complaining about. Skyrocket hits this stance too. Leo is going under, right? Consistently. So Nii said, show us these moves, bro. Look at that. Nii is not taking this for granted. And Nii is not a, a noob at fighting Xiaoyu. He's known for bullying Sodom, a prominent Korean Xiaoyu player on his stream and laughing while he does it. So he's pretty familiar with fighting against Ling. So we've shown a bunch of debates from both sides. I went on for a minute there, let's keep going. I wanna talk about the next thing, which is who's right, right? Like, is there a right or a wrong side here? I wanna cover some situations to really elaborate on that, okay? Um, there are three separate problems, okay? There's the AOP duck, the side step right AOP, and then there's a full crouch AOP. I'll show it briefly. I don't have a good, like, example of how it works, but the main thing I want to show here is just what it looks like. So let me turn off these display settings really, really quick. Uh, player attack. Okay, look. So look at Xiaoyu here. This is regular AOP. This is AOP duck. This is sidestep AOP. And then this is full crouch AOP. From crouch, go into AOP. And she, you see how she has that bit of duck animation early? So, so this is, uh, these are just to show the different options. People are all complaining and vouching for three different things. So we need to be really clear about what we're talking about. In the outline here, I talked about Nii's one minute video of all the evasion. That was just, uh, that was just this clip where he was showing all these multiple characters having evasion problems, right? That's what I'm talking about here. But another Ling Xiaoyu specialist, Changbang, has some great examples to talk about as well. Um... I did mention, before I go into those, I just want to show you what I mean about being clear about which AOP we're talking about. So, this player is talking about, if you look at this clip, then use, pick a better move, right? AOP duck doesn't evade this move, this big scooping low. Uh, this is, shall use up back four. It hits AOP, it scoops up, there's no evasion. The counter argument is that 
if I pick Xiaoyu on both sides here, uh, sidestep right AOP will evade that. So I'm going to record Xiaoyu doing that real quick, and then we'll keep going. But uh, the complaint me is having is that AOP down on top of these other AOP options is really, really annoying. So I'm going to do a jab, and then this. And you'll see that if I do sidestep right AOP, I can dodge that. So I can't dodge it with AOP duck, but I can dodge it with sidestep right AOP, okay? So Xiaoyu is not singularly problematic. It's the fact that there are multiple options. Okay, so this, this guy's re response is not entirely foolproof because we're talking about the overall fact that Xiaoyu has many, many ways to be evasive. Um, this mentions, this shows the FC AOP. So if you look at this situation, look at that evasion. Let's look at it in slow-mo. So Jin does down two, which puts Xiaoyu in crouch. And then look at that AOP animation. She automatically starts ducking. This is that full crouch AOP, FC AOP. And then this is a situation that shows how Horong's down three, four, the move that was, that started all of this drama, right? If you want a reminder, uh, this is what started it all. It was Kawis's clip. Uh, this guy shows how actually Horong's move is kind of weak to sidestep right in general, right? Shall you just sidestep right duck here? No AOP, and it completely evades. So there's a bit more nuance to the situation than just it's just AOP down. It's just sidestep right. It could just be that Horong's down three four is really really weak at tracking. This just adds a little context, and I, this is just a visual example of the different AOPs and different ways to evade in Tekken. Right, so AOP duck works, but only with precise timing, which we showed in my clip. And even the bears can sidestep right. Horang's down 3-4. Okay, just, just a little segue just to show the differences matter. There's a lot of problems. A lot of people have different complaints about different things. And to top it off, now that we have like the, the differences clear, let's look at like a compilation my voice cracked from how overwhelming it is. A compilation of Xiaoyu's like biggest disasters for the opponent. It's good for Xiaoyu. If you read AOP, just do a low. Chang Bang again, Xiaoyu specialist. Here it is, sidestep right AOP evading Reyna's hell sweep. Looking at the next move, it evades another low. Checking another move. Evading another low. Yep, and evading another low. And someone in chat said to the wrong side too, because Reyna's Hell Sweep is traditionally stepped to the left. And Xiaoyu's going to the right. Chang Bang again, more information to be uh, misinformation, or giving us more information. You'll see here that Zafina's down forward one is failing to track sidestep right AOP. Right? Now he's going to pick Lily. This is an unedited clip. He's going to pick Lily, who is known for having the best sidestep in Tekken. And Lily is going to try to sidestep right this down forward one. You already know what's going to happen. Zafina's down forward one tracks Lily's sidestep right. The best sidestepper in the game, unable to sidestep. Xiaoyu, able to sidestep using the AOP. Next example, if Ling dashes forward, she will evade, crush means evade, uh, Horong's right foot forward down forward three. She's not even entering OP or ducking, she's moving forward. <laughs> She's walking forward and it goes under, okay? If Ling walks forward, entering AOP, the back one hits. Look at this example. She goes in AOP and just gets hit, okay? But what if she goes in AOP and walks forward? Look at him. He's inputting forward to go underneath this mid, okay? Next example. Xiaoyu can option select, which means cover multiple options, of Azusena's forward four extensions and launch using AOP. Azusena has a mid-high and a mid-mid. Xiaoyu does not care. She AOPs both of them. That's the high, that's the mid. And in both situations, she gets a launch. You guys are getting the picture, but let's look at these. These are cool situations. Tekken is all about situational awareness, okay? So if you're a Xiaoyu player, study up. If you're an opponent, study up, because you don't want to get bodied. So. This might seem like a bunch of pointless niche, niche information, but Tekken is all about situational awareness. Okay, let's keep moving. AOP. Ling's breathing can evade it. Do you see how she got hit? Changbang is not inputting anything except... Wait, no, he is. No, no, no. Changbang is controlling Azusena. Xiaoyu is just sitting there. And depending on how she breathes, she sometimes gets hit and sometimes she doesn't.
So this is more of a tech and hitbox nuance type thing, okay? One thing uh, from, a, from a poster called Eclair, uh, fan of the legacy Tekken games, is she says, stop being, stop being dishonest, okay? This is Tekken Tag 2 where Brian's down back 2 catches Shao Yu's AOP down, right? Plenty of examples of different timings, things like that. Some pre-sidestep left to get some better alignment, okay? This is just to show a bunch of examples where Brian's down back two is successful. This is Tekken 8. No matter what Eclair does, we cannot get the Brian down back two to hit Xiao Yu. So it's not just, this is how it's always been. It's actually a little bit better, right? It's actually a little bit better. And it, this could be because of a Brian nerf, or shall you buff? We're not sure, but either way, as a player, the practical example is that it's different. It's not the same like it used to be. You cannot just read AOP and then go lower mid. This is loud. I'm sorry. Uh, here's another fun compilation of all of this failing. Brian's huge mids known for giant hitboxes just absolutely <laughs> floundering against AOP down. Eat smash, no good. Get launched, kid. <laughs> And Xiao Yu gets a heat engage off this dodge. Oh my goodness. This is why it's crazy. This hatchet kick is supposed to track this sidestep. And it would have tracked this sidestep until she went into AOP. We saw this example already, but this kind of visually shows it. All right. Um, this is not an AOP specific situation, but I thought I'd show it anyways. Xiao Yu's California roll can also go under, but this is more of a commitment. This is like the other characters where there's like an attack built in. It's not like an empty stance where you can just stop. She's committed to this attack. So not the same situation, but I thought it was a funny clip to share anyways. I have all these windows with so many Twitter tabs because I want to cover this, okay? So now you have a better idea of how crazy Xiaoyu can be. Excuse me. <laughs> um, what does this mean for the game? And I'm going to put forth the argument. It's not as simple as just adapt. Because as we saw, even if you pick a low that has good option coverage, it can lose, okay? So I want to start from a comment from Lohai, uh, former Tekken World Tour champion. He puts it very simply. We can't take our plus frames against Xiao Yu. And this is really important, right? If you have plus frames and you want to keep using your offense, she can suddenly disappear off the screen and your plus frames don't matter and you die for it. So as a pro player... It makes more sense to just not attack. And if you don't attack, then she gets to take control of the game again, okay? So, uh, let me... I want to detail Lohai's Lo, Lo Lo replies here in a concrete way. I didn't want to flood this, like, outline, okay? So, at a core level, when you play Tekken at a pro level, you want... It's, it's, a, it's a glorified rock, paper, scissors. But you want to reduce the amount of variance. Nobody likes to flip a coin or hit rock, paper, scissors to win a million dollars. That's more Street Fighter, right? Tekken doesn't have a million dollars. But you get what I mean. You don't want to bet your win on chance. You want to reduce as much luck as possible. So that means playing your plus frames as one example, attacking when you're in control, giving up pressure if it's too high variance, right? So against Xiao Yu, traditionally in old Tekkens, you would either pick a safe move, like that Brian scooping move, to, uh, to cover the, the AOP. You wouldn't get a big reward, but at least you wouldn't die. Like, you wouldn't get whiff punished, heat engaged upon, and die. Um, or, or another option is you could just give up your pressure, right? Um, let's talk a bit about why that's scary in Tekken 8. Xiaoyu has brand new moves and mix-ups that make it so if you're not the one controlling her, she can really do you in. And that's kind of a Tekken 8 theme. Every character's like that in Tekken 8. But that's why AOP is so scary now is because... If you leave her alone, she'll mix you up. We'll show examples in a sec, but I want to talk a bit more about Tekken conceptually. And this next tweet talks about this. Jason Lim says, Evasion is one of Xiaoyu's strengths and makes her unique. Her Art of Phoenix, AOP, got sides has the sidestep right property. In this video, she is sidestepping to the right and then AOP. That's why she could be more evasive. And we did kind of like half debunk that, like it's a bit of both. Uh, if evasion is the matter, she is not the only character. Why is she the only one that keeps getting accused? If this is her identity, why is it a problem? Let me talk about some Tekken logic. So we talked about the whole RPS and variance control. Historically in Tekken, if you think of characters like Xiaoyu, Zafina, Yoshimitsu, the like rule breaker characters with a lot of evasion, they usually pay a cost. 
So they can dodge stuff, right? Like Xiaoyu has AOP. But a good attacker to avoid getting dodged will pump the brakes. They'll stop their offense. And why that was so good against Xiaoyu in the past is because Xiaoyu didn't have a monstrous offense. Right? So you could turtle against her and she would struggle, right? That was kind of the core identity. Water's important. Her core identity was that she could dodge all your shit, but if you chilled out, it was hard for her to kill you. So that was the cost she paid. Even though she could break some rules of defense, she had a hard time killing you. So it was like, that was the trade-off. Strengths and weaknesses. But now in this game, Xiaoyu has this insane hypnotist stance. She has a bunch of other moves, but she has this insane hypnotist stance. Let me pull up the game briefly and just show you what this looks like, okay? Hypnotist stance. I'm going to set my opponent to block. Just guard all. Or a standing block. We'll do standing block. Hypnotist is uh, this stance. Hold on, we'll find it. Uh, I, I know how to get it off one down two. And the more steps she takes, the more empowered these moves become. So at three steps, she has a low launcher. Right? At two steps, it's just a... Wait, I didn't do two steps. At two steps, it's a knockdown, okay? And why this is so relevant is because she never really had a strong mix-up game before. You could react to her key lows, or her lows were just pokes. In this game, she has so many new ways to enter Hypnotist Stance with frame advantage, so you kind of have to guess, right? And this low, even if you block it, right? So that's plus 7 on hit, that's crazy. Even if you were to block this, setting up the practice settings here, even if you were to block this, oops, my bad, do I have to hit her block? Here we go. Professional, former professional Tekken player, by the way. Uh, minus 12. So you don't get a good punish, right? You get a really baby punish for this insane low. And if you duck it, she gets a heat engage, okay? And in heat, Xiaoyu is a menace, right? She has like true blo like anime block strings almost that are completely ridiculous. Like, look at this. She can go this, into this, into hypnotist, into the low. Yes, there's counterplay, and this isn't an anti Xiaoyu video, but you can basically, you can sidestep right, uh, you want the counterplay. You can sidestep right this move in heat. That big jumping move that spends meter, you can sidestep that to the right. Okay, the last hit. Little pro tip for you. The point is, she has new offense she never had before. She has insane combo damage she never had before. So now the rule breaking is so much scarier. It used to be, okay, she can break these rules, we'll chill out, we can control the variance that way. But now she can kill us if we don't attack her. So what do we do? If we attack her, we can die. If we sit still, we can die. What is the answer? Um, let me first show you the combo damage just so you're like convinced my argument isn't just like blowing smoke. This is again more Changbang clips. This is just a regular combo. This isn't built on evasion or anything like that. But like this is what happens if you mess up against Xiaoyu. Yes, there's a stage gimmick involved. But even so, look at this damage. 126 and then this last hit is guaranteed. That was a 147 damage combo. Look at his HP. That was guaranteed. You have 180 HP in Tekken. That's not normal. Yes, there was a there, there was a stage there was a stage gimmick, okay? Like let's see what happens next. Okay, same launcher. Okay, nice little this, this combo's crazy. This combo's fire. This combo's cool. Little stage gimmick involved, little re-splat, kind of situational combo, heat dash, 132. Okay. Let's look at another one. Wall splat. Uh-oh. Yeah, we know what's going to happen. She's going back to the wall. 100 damage, and then this hit is guaranteed 120 damage. So, Xiaoyu has insane mix-ups, insane damage. Right, uh, I didn't show it, but her heat engager out of this uh, hypnotist stance, this heat engager here, uh, if you're already in heat, this heat engager is a proper like uh, heat dash into a full launch. So I have to make sure that Xiaoyu is crouch blocking here. Show this, go into heat. This mid is a heat engager, so she can get a full combo. Her legs are in the air. I don't know the Xiaoyu combo. I'm not going to pretend to. Here, I'll just give you, I'll give you a basic one. If you're a Xiaoyu player, check this out. Very, very basic bad combo. All right. There we go. She can get a full combo off of that heat engage, which again has that knockdown mix up for the low. And if you really sit still, the low like launches you. In heat, she gets access to the like later steps of the hypnotist stance faster. Does it say that in the move list actually? Uh, we should check this out. Uh, 
allows the use of a powered up version of hypnotist yeah so insane Xiao Yu is really really good what is the conclusion should we nerf this character is that like like are we supposed to wait i put this in the wrong list here my bad tech and logic goes down here so what do we do like buff nerf adapt of course you know that my channel is heavily built on robbing speed kicks of his content so we're gonna look at a speed kicks tweet he's been playing xiao yu for the past couple days maybe just one day uh and really studying the character and he found that xiao yu is fundamentally designed on the idea that you don't poke you don't control normally instead you have powered up evasion and defensive buttons and that's what Jason Lim was saying here. He said evasion is one of her strengths. It's what makes her unique. AOP is what she's all about, right? Trickery and things like that. And she needs to find advantage positions off of these defensive and evasive options. And then she wins a mind game and then a chance of a reward, okay? That is the Xiaoyu fundamental design that we've been fighting against probably since, since she was introduced. I know for sure... At least in the older Tekkens like Tag 2 and uh, Tekken 7, this was kind of the case. She doesn't like blow you up in neutral. She doesn't oppress you that much. There's a lot of defensive movement you can pick to like counterplay. But when she does evade you or set up a situation where she's in an advantage, it can get really nasty. However, in Tekken 8, if you don't control your opponent, you get run over. That's like a fundamental part of this game. If you're not going in there hitting your opponent, they're probably beating the shit out of you. So without her evasion, she would get shit on. That's basically what that means. So with the way the game forces you to interact, the designers of the game decided that Xiaoyu can only survive if she gets a consistent mix-up, right? So she won't, she still won't have control, like controlled poking. She'll still have her high evasion, but we'll give her mix-ups. And he says that's currently in its current power state too forgiving. So probably a decent design, too powerful in its current state so for him the obvious solution is to force her into a disadvantageous position after hypnotist 2 so that instead of automatically being an advantage you have to re-earn that advantage right so what is he talking about one two one is minus nine xiaoyu has to stop playing the game and guess and defend right she can't play her crazy evasion she can't play like a sidestep you can't even use armor or rage art against most options one two one Minus nine. Currently, after Hypnotist 2, she's plus five. Minus four on the single step one. But remember that in Heat, you get enhanced Hypnotist right away off one step. So she's always plus five off of this Hypnotist move. Look how far she is. There's no follow up. That's not the point. That's not the point. The point is because she's an evasion based character. I'm really glad that chat message came in at the perfect time. Because she's an evasion-based character, she doesn't have to re-earn the advantage. She's still in a position where she has this semi-control. Where Lohai was talking about, we have to give up our plus frames. You don't even have plus frames here. You have minus frames. I went to the wrong screen. Right? So, so no, she doesn't get a free mix-up, right? Right? She doesn't get a free mix-up. She's too far away. However... That doesn't matter as much because she's still able to play the game. She's still in a position where she can kill you for trying to hit her. And remember that Tekken 8, Tekken 8 is built on the idea of hitting your opponent to control them. If Xiaoyu is in any position where trying to hit her could get you killed, or, you know, this thing, then she's still in control, right? So that's why even though Xiaoyu is plus five, or, you know, in the, in the worst case scenario, like plus four, she's still chilling because she still gets to play. One, two, one. I know I'm changing screens a lot. I'm like coming up with this on the fly. One, two, one puts her minus nine. She has to totally be at the mercy of her opponent and re-earn that ad advantage state. But Hypnotist 2 doesn't have that weakness. So what is the conclusion here? I talked a lot for about half an hour. What do we do? I'm going to just agree with speed. Probably nerf Hypnotist 2 or other nerfs to the mix-up, right? Keep the evasion. That's her identity. Allow her to not get run over by giving her some 
form of offense. Now I talked to Tekken Cadence, another specialist, and his argument was that her combo damage, specifically the spike combo where she gets the up back four, needs to be nerfed. Because there are too many checkmate situations she can put you in where you're just gonna die, right? And there are too many knowledge checks where you're just gonna die. And for him, he said it was less fun finding all these auto-win situations off of setups. These are my proposed nerfs for Xiaoyu from talking to other players. I would have talked to other players as well, but uh, I wanted to put this video out and kind of cover this in real time. So this is what I think. Let me know if you think I missed something. I know there are a lot of passionate Xiaoyu players, okay? So I'm not saying like gut your character, you deserve to lose. I'm saying that the evasion plus the attacking strength is skewing her, I think, past her identity. There are ways to abuse her beyond what made her cool in my mind which was mind games and evasion now she also has some oppressive offense it would be cool for me in tekken even my main character to be weak in some areas and strong in other specific areas that's my philosophy behind balance let me know in the comments if you agree let me know if you disagree let me know if you have questions if i missed something you know the drill leave a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you want to see more i'll catch you in the next video peace